Okay, now they want us to find the center and the radius, so this time they give us the equation, but now we want to find what the center and the radius is, and once again, we're going to make the graph. For this one, what you need to do is you need to get it into the same form as the standard form equation of a circle. In other words, I have to have x minus something and y minus something inside the parentheses. I also have to write this as a square. So I'm going to change this formula and put it into standard form. So I'm going to do, for this, for the 1, the plus is the same thing as subtracting a negative. So I want to make it x minus some number, and the only way to make it equal to 1 is if I make it x minus negative 1. Next, I'm going to do y minus 3 squared, and then 25. 25 can be written as 5 times 5, or 5 squared. So, with it written in this form, now I'm ready to find the center and the radius. The center is going to be whatever the h value is the number right after this first minus. So the h value is going to be negative 1 in this case. The y value is going to be 3. So the center is negative 1, 3. The radius is the number that's being squared. So it's not 25, it's 5. So that would be my radius. In the future, what you can do is, now that you've seen this done mathematically, the way, the shortcut way of doing it is basically opposite sign of what's inside the parentheses here. So if it's plus 1, you have negative 1 with your center. If you have minus 3, it becomes plus 3. And then the square root of 25 is going to be 5. So in the future, when we do other ones, instead of writing it out in this form, you can actually just do the shortcut way, but I wanted to first show you at least mathematically what's going on there. Now that we have this information, we're ready to do the graph. Uh, the center is negative 1, 3, so I start by plotting the center. Negative 1, and I go up 3. So right there is my center, negative 1, 3. The radius is going to be 5, so I want to go up 5, down 5, left 5, and right 5 to create those four points that I can connect and get my graph. So from here, I'm going to go up 5, right here. I'm going to go down 5. From the center, I'm going to go left 5. And I'm going to go to the right 5. So now I have my four points. I can connect those. And this would be my completed graph. And now we're ready to go down to part B. So part B. Let's do what I just talked about before. Again, you want to, if we want to do the shortcut way of doing that, We'll first start with the center, and now it's opposite sign of this number, so instead of negative 3, it's going to be positive 3. So the question is, well, what am I going to put for the y value here? I don't have a parenthesis in there. Okay, well, this you can actually imagine as y minus 0 squared, or you could write it as y plus 0 squared. So if you don't see a number after that one, that means that it's always assumed that it's going to be a 0 which means the y coordinate of my center is, is 0, so 3, 0 is going to be my center. For my radius, now my radius, you're going to take the square root of that number. Now, this shows you that your radius is not always going to be a perfect integer like we had before. You might actually have a decimal. In this case, the square root of 13 would be the exact answer that you want to put down. However, this is also equal to 3.6. I'm going to change it to 3.6 just for graphing purposes so I know how big to make these points when I go up, down, left, and right. Center is 3, 0. 3, 0 is right here. Radius is 3.6. So I'm going to go up 3.6 and down 3.6. So I'm going to go ahead and estimate this. It's about right there would be 3.6 above. If I go 3.6 down below, it's about right there. To the left, 3.6, so probably about right here. And to the right, 3.6, so 1, 2, 3, and I get a little bit more. That's going to be there. Okay, so now I'm going to connect all these with a circle. And this is going to be my completed graph. 